the Government of Canada at this time has no intention of uh, reopening that debate. I understand it is the, before the courts, it's been before the courts before, but obviously we will be watching with great interest whatever uh, the Supreme Court may decide. Welcome back to the arena. I'm Michael Corrin. Now, these complex, profound issues of morality and ethics, anyone who says to you they have all the answers, walk away. No one has all the answers. Euthanasia, I'm against it. I, I've seen the slippery slope in Europe, what can happen in the Netherlands and Holland and parts of Scandinavia. At the same time, there are very strong arguments. If someone does have just a few days left to live and they're in pain, we can deal with most suffering, but there are nuances here. So I, I, I think we should hit, listen to all opinions, but I have to say I am extremely worried uh, about what will happen if euthanasia becomes legalized. Now, today, uh, we went to a demonstration in Toronto, dying with dignity. Again, the sort of people who, who will turn up midday in Toronto to protest, they're not run-of-the-mill Canadians. People I met, a lot of them I've seen before at other demonstrations. They were activists for all sorts of causes. We interviewed a few. Uh, let's have a look. So, can Canadian Unitarians for social justice? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm. Why? Why for social justice? Yeah. Well, we uh, stand for social justice. Unitarians is part of our belief that we need to stand for social justice. And so having choice in death is part of that. Right. That no well, one should it, put sorry. someone, no one should force someone else to suffer. What do, when you say choice in death, what does that mean, though? That, that you, if, you, if you're not able, well, you should, you should be able to find a way that, that is not traumatic to yourself or others to die. And if you're in, in extreme suffering, then maybe you'll need assistance. Yeah. So, I mean, some people will say a disease like Huntington's or ALS will actually commit suicide sooner than they would have to if they could have had assistance when they, mm. they're no longer able to do it themselves. Shouldn't we be uh, obsessed, a glorious obsession with life, investing as much money as possible and time and love I I into preserving, prolonging and improving life? Tell that to the people that are anti-choice and abortion. They, they just make sure that people continue their pregnancy until it's too late to, to end it, and then they abandon them, and they don't, Do help, they don't help the babies oh. when they're born. Can you give me an example of when that happened? I can't give you an individual example. Do you have personal experience? You or a loved one, are they suffering? No, not personally, but yeah. the thing is I'm worried about me being down the road. I'm 73 years old now. Okay. I'll, I'll kill you now if you like. Yeah. I'll do it. G oh, give, give, yeah. give me $50. I'll do it. <laughs> but, uh, but on a serious note, I mean, there are compelling cases, people who are suffering. Yeah. But you look at what does happen in countries like in the Netherlands and Belgium where it has been legalized. Yeah. It must concern you. A, a teenager who's depressed, wanting to die and being allowed to? No, why, why would that concern me? Because it's not my concern, it's her concern. I'm not your brother's keeper. What, 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 aren't you? No. Oh, you say, I, I really care for other people. I, I believe well, in community. I do too. I, I care for them, but the thing is, there's only so much I can do for you. You know what I mean? You have no, to do, I, don't, I don't actually. You have to do... Um, more for you than I can do for you. So, I mentioned the case of a teenager yeah. going through depression, not uncommon for a no, teenager. No, of course not. And if they want to die, but you say that's their problem. Well, it's not their problem, it's the, their will. Whose decision should it be? Only the person who is who wants to die? Well, I think you've got to do a living will. What if you don't? Well, you're able. And if you don't? then that's a tougher situation. I don't think anybody else can make it if there is no living okay. will. And what about someone who feels they want to die? They're not in pain, but maybe mental uh, challenges, depression, loneliness. Is that a valid reason? Personally, I think it's a valid reason. Yeah. I think that's a lot harder reason to argue. Of course. For someone who's desperately lonely, the solution to, to the loneliness is not to give them community and help, but to let them die? Not to loneliness. But I think to somebody that's approaching death, even if they're not in excruciating pain, the way they, they say in the Quebec legislation, they just had I enough. don't think you have to wait for excruciating right. pain. They've had a good inning, they want to go. Yeah, I think you have to wait until they're approaching death. But, right. okay. but loneliness isn't a reason. I just want to emphasize, when they say, why make people suffer, it doesn't mean because they have to listen to these songs. It just it means end of life. But there are a lot, 
quite a lot of elderly, very grey-haired ladies here singing songs about dying with dignity. There is something Pythoness, something surreal about all of this. I mean, it, it, <laughs> this is not about compassion or love. This is neurosis. It really is. Well, surely you're too young to be thinking about death. Absolutely not. Um, I witnessed my grandmother um, terminally dehydrated in the hospital for 12 days and ever since then I've been extremely passionate about this issue and I'm also um, going to be an intern for Dying with Dignity so I hold it very close to my heart. Right. But I, you know, m most of us have seen bad death. Death is generally not good. No. You know, people say that they died well. well maybe some people do. Um, my parents didn't die well. But surely the solution to your, your grandmother, God rest her soul, was to make sure she was given medication, was helped, wasn't alone. Not to kill, but to make someone's end easier. Right, but why put someone through um days and days of torture when they should be able to have their own control and, you know, take their life in their own hands, say goodbye on their terms, mm -hmm. and, you know, leave peacefully and painfully. Yeah, painlessly. Painlessly. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I understand. Yeah. Where, where do we draw lines? I mean, people talk about this, and I think it is a, it's a valid question, that someone who's in pain close to death, it's a very compelling argument, mm -hmm. but there are others, and there are people in the Netherlands, there have been several cases now of people with depression, mm -hmm. which is very painful, who've wanted to die and have been allowed to. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? No, um, I think there should be very specific guidelines, regulations put in place. What about the right to die? Do you support these people? No, I not like I told these ladies, uh, uh, a good movie for you to see on that, which is, futuristic but a lot of these movies really hit it right on the mark and it's yeah. Soylent Green. Oh yeah, where they eat people. No, no, Soylent Green with Charlton Heston yeah. and uh, Edward G. Robinson. Robinson. They eat people. Uh, That's what Soylent yeah, Green is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they, they well, eat, I mean, come they, on, a human sandwich for I haven't eaten my lunch yet. I mean, I'm up for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, about what, once you open the door, okay. you're not going to close right. it. Take a look what happened. I think there's some Jer wisdom there. Yeah. Uh, Sue Rodriguez in, in 1993 said it best, yeah. which is the question of who owns my body? Who owns my life? That's the question that we want to answer here. So that, that, t that teenage child, no, teenager, with depression shouldn't be helped to die? Absolutely not. Why? What but, I'm it, but, it, but it's his or her body. No, well, it's more than just his or her body. I thought it's you also just said it looking, was just his or her body. No, 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 I never oh, said that. You did. What I did say was that it's, it's about, that is obviously the consent of the person is a, a paramount concern. But it's also about the safeguards, it's about the opinions okay. of doctors. Those are the types of things. Hold on, because I'm losing you here, because you just said Sue Rodriguez said it best when she said it's my body to decide. Now you're contradicting that. So other people are involved? Of course other people are involved. Right. Why so many uh, prosecutions and legal cases in the Netherlands, for example, and in Belgium actually now, where things can, can have gone terribly wrong? Can you give me an example wrong. of one? Yes, I can give you an example of a, a woman who was certainly terminally ill. Well, we all are in a way. But she was dying and she, this happened three years ago, went for a, a, a checkup at the hospital with a very compassionate doctor who put her in a private room for the night because the food was better. Mm. She was euthanized without his permission. Another doctor okay. came in, terminally ill woman, private ward, must be here for euthanasia, she was killed. Okay. You know, there. I mean, you must know these cases, surely. There are some cases. There are cases, for instance, the nurse in Italy recently who killed 38 patients because she found them annoying. Mm. If you can find a more well, that's just just drastically uh, pro-life sort of country than, than Italy, and, and their legal restrictions we, around assisted dying. That's, she was I'm a murderer. Just, we're yeah, we're exactly. talking about euthanasia being applied. It's a very interesting combination of people. That There are some just ordinary people who are concerned with the issues here, which, which you know, I think all of us would share. But a lot of Olivia Chow badges, I have to say. I'm not saying Olivia Chow wants to kill everyone, but a lot of Olivia Chow badges, a lot of people on, on the hard left, Unitarians for social justice, very radical views of people I, I, I was speaking to. Um, so it, I wouldn't say this represents some cross-section of, of, of real Canada. This is an issue that needs debate, but I don't think we're getting it here today.